We are going to look at the appearance of long lines of convective lift and better ways to fly cross-country along them. Let's first examine some examples of how they occur. One example happens in the flatlands, when the wind has its maximum speed at the cloud level and there is a limit to the convection above. In calm conditions, the distance between thermal columns is about two and a half times their height. With cloud streets, the distance between the streets will also follow this rule. A circular convective flow is set up, reinforcing the lift along the streets and increasing the interstreet sink. Follow the street downwind and you'll find that the thermals are grouped more closely together and sometimes you'll be able to fly straight for long periods in rising air. We also get lines of convection when two air masses converge. For example, when an offshore wind meets a sea breeze. This allows us to make the cross-country flights parallel to the coastline. This convergence will often have curtain-like cloud formations with the moist air coming from the sea condensing at a lower altitude. We can also find long lines of organised convection along mountain chains. If a long chain of mountains separates flatlands with different meteorological conditions on either side, we may find the convergence line is pushed towards the flatlands if the wind from one side is more dominant. We then have a very long line of cloud over the flatlands, which resembles our first example of cloud streets, but without the strong winds often associated with classic cloud street development. This situation occurs often in central Spain with the convergence lines crossing the flatlands hundreds of kilometres long but I'll save a detailed explanation of that for another video. Classic speed to fly theory tells us that we should fly slowly in lift and fast in sink. Flying straight along a line of lift using speed to fly technique is called dolphin flying. If we look at this example, we see dolphin flying achieves a faster overall speed. If you fly just below the cloud base, you may not be able to keep the correct speed to fly. A pilot skimming cloud base will often need to fly fast in the lift to reduce his sink rate to avoid being sucked into the cloud. Worse, he may waste time changing course direction or making height loss manoeuvres to keep out of cloud. Likewise, flying at high speed on a paraglider in thermic turbulence may lead to the sudden loss of altitude and time wasted due to collapses. Only when we are approaching the end of the course should we try to get to the cloud base to maximise our glide distance for the next glide into the blue. A paraglider flying at cloud base is in danger of being sucked into the cloud and may need to make radical course corrections to avoid it, such as in this example with the pilot on the left. The red glider on the right is lower and able to use the correct speed to fly and also benefits from needing to make only small course corrections to avoid cloud suck. A good rule of thumb is to use a 45 degrees angle to the edge of the cloud as your imagined possible upward glide angle. In really strong lift, even this may not save you from entering cloud. Using your experience of the day's conditions, you can adapt to this angle, be more cautious with the stronger days, or allowing yourself to go more to the centre of the cloud on weaker days. Gliding along a line of lift can be amazing. Good luck with your flights and enjoy the experience.